Good morning. This is July 31st, 2022. We have picked the okra this morning and show you that is two five gallon buckets and the each of them is filled more than half full. So this is one full five gallon bucket of okra. If you put them together, my guess is that they would weigh um, 10 to 15 pounds. In the grocery store, that stuff's got to be $3 a pound. So that's 30 to 50 dollars worth of okra right there. Debbie and I picked it in about, I'd say 10 minutes. And it was uh, early this morning, so it wasn't too hot. Well, we're going to process this a little bit. We're going to talk about the okra and what it, where it came from and a little bit of information about okra. All right, here we are. We picked the okra, and now we've got to do something with it. We've got to process it. And while I'm processing this, I'll talk to you a little bit about okra. Now, my source of information is YouTube University. That's where I go to school. And we went to school on okra, studied up on it a little bit. Some of it's common sense, but I'll still tell you a little bit about it. Um, okra is, the origin of okra apparently is disputed. Some say West Africa, some say India, nobody really knows for sure because this plant has been cultivated for a long time. That one's woody, listen. And you notice it's also got a yellowish, brownish tint. That goes to the yard or the animals. So okra is widely used in Asia. These are good. Really all over the world now. That's a little woody. We're going to throw that one out there. That, that's got a little too far. We like to let the okra grow until, yes, we'll get some that are too big, but if you, if you just harvest these right here, these little bitty ones, this used to be the standard. Well, that's definitely going to be uh, soft and pliable, but you couldn't afford to hire. You, you got to pick okra by hand. There's no machines that I know of that will pick okra. So... One like this, you'd have to have five or six of these to equal one of these. And this one, even though it's big, you see, it, it's still edible. So, we get little ones and big ones, but uh, you'd be forever picking the little ones. And uh, if you were doing it to sell, it would cost so much. Labor is so expensive now. Around here, you can get some guys to work for $10 an hour sometimes, intermittently. So we try to get them like this. This is certainly edible. And we also pick a few of the small ones. But like I said, back in the old days when labor was cheap, they would... All the fruits and vegetables we picked, you know, didn't regard the labor that much. But those days are over. Labor is hard to come by. People don't want to work outside much anymore. And if they do, you got to pay them. And they deserve to be paid. Definitely deserve to be paid for their work. So, we do it ourselves. I'm over 70, but I can still get out and work in the garden and a few hours a day. Okay, back to the origin of okra. Well, nobody knows. I've always heard Africa. But 
nobody really knows. Okra is a perennial. And perennial, if I'm not mistaken, means that you don't have to plant it every year. The other side of that corn, it coin is an annual. However, if you grow it where there's frost, it'll die in the winter because you can't tolerate frost. So you have to plant it as an annual. In other words, you have to plant it annually. Save your seed, start it when frost is over, and that's how it is around here. Now down in South Florida, where they don't get frost, they can grow it year-round. And by the way, I think that's according to the information that I got. 90% of the okra for the United States is grown down there. You're better off growing it yourself. I'm telling you that right now because you, you pay arm and leg for this wonderful plant and I mean product if you get it at the grocery store. You can grow this right on up into the northern states. It'll be a very short growing season up there. But it was grown in Virginia back in colonial times and commented on by Thomas Jefferson. Alright, I'm going to take just a little break from what we were doing and I'm going to throw my net. I am a fisher of men and I'm going to throw the net right there and you just never know what you might catch. Psalm 112 from the Holy Bible Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. Okay, you like, would you like that to be you? Your descendants, blessed, riches in your house, your descendants endure forever? Well, that's promise right here. And it says that this can happen to you if you fear the Lord and delight greatly in His commandments. Let me encourage you to check out the salvation offered by Yeshua, the Messiah, otherwise known as Jesus Christ. That's what this is all about. Thank you. All right, another thing about okra is it is a very hardy plant. That means that it resists the different problems that kill plants in your garden. It, there are some diseases in certain places, but most of the diseases you get in uh, is where you grow something over and over and over again in big fields and all, but we've never experienced any disease problems or either we didn't know what it was and it just grows. It grows from the time you plant it after the frost, danger of frost is over here, which is generally they say March 15th. We usually start a little bit later. And it grows until frost kills it, which is somewhere around middle of November to a little later. And you, It's all done with okra here once frost hits it. Okay, um, 
It is heat and drought tolerant. You can't get too hot for okra. And it will, it's got a really nice root system. And once it gets established, it will tolerate quite a bit of drought. Okra needs lots of sun. So if you've got a garden that's in the yard or around a lot of trees that has a lot of shade, this plant's not going to really live up to its reputation. It may make a little bit, but it likes sun. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about planting this stuff. Okay, the edible part of it is the pod. I can't really tell you what it tastes like. It is pleasant to the taste. It does have a slimy nature to it. There are ways to mitigate that or you can live with it. Like most of the people in the south, if you're hungry you're just going to deal with the slime. It has no flavor. It's just a little slimy. Now I have other videos about how to cook it without slime which you can look at. We're putting this, we're going to process this and put it in the freezer. This stuff freezes very well. Uh, blanch it, put it in freezer bags, let it cool off and put it in your freezer. Also, something that I learned at YouTube University this time is that uh, you can eat the leaves. We never knew that. We never ate the, e the leaves. However, uh, picked when they're young, apparently they're quite good. All right. Another product of the okra, industrial product, is the oil in the seeds. Apparently the oil in the seeds, now that would be from a grown plant, uh, that would be, oh this one's quite woody, this one I threw out, show you, can't, hardly can't cut through it. I'll show you the seeds. Once the pod becomes mature, it has seeds in it and apparently it's a very good oil rivaling or bettering sunflower oil and also the yield of it is quite uh, amazing per acre so in some places they might just grow the plant and let it all go to seed and then harvest the oil out of it okay now the stems you see how woody this is a lot of fiber in there. The stems are processed and used as a fiber for quite a few purposes. One of them is the reinforcement of polymer um, composites. What? Composites. Polymer composites. Yeah, that's a good word. Polymer composites. Polymer just means plastic. So you have some kind of plastics that you're making a sheet of plastic or something like that. You can put the fibers from the okra stems, mix it in with the formula, and it reinforces it or act kind of like wire would do in cement or fiberglass to use that in as a reinforcement in some products and of course fiberglass is not organic and it's quite dangerous so this would be a much better answer as a fiber uh, in a polymer or in a plastic another industrial purpose is the mucilage which is the slime Apparently it is used in the treatment of wastewater for cleaning the wastewater. All around this is an amazing plant. Certainly for eating and for other purposes too. And another thing is if you're feeling like you need to get your hands and arms real itchy, this will do it when you pick the okra. So if that's if that's one of your fetishes, then uh, you can go for it. Or you can wear long sleeves and gloves if you don't like that. But it does put a mild itch, mild 
to us because we were used to it, but to some other people it would probably drive them batty. So when we came in the house a while ago, we didn't wear gloves or long sleeves. We just went in the bathroom and poured a little bit of rubbing alcohol. First I washed my hands with soap and then a little um, rubbing alcohol and, you know, Right now, it's been a half an hour since we picked. I still feel a little bit of, little bit of itchy on my hands. My common sense tells me that that's God put that on that plant for protection of the plant because this is such a delicious uh, pod. Oh, by the way, you can eat these things raw. That smells good raw. You can dry it in the dehydrator, flavor it a little bit with some salt, a little bit of uh, soy sauce or something. Uh, you can pickle it. Pickled okra is very good. You can buy that in the grocery store and you will pay an arm and a leg for it. However, you can pickle it yourself. Okay, well this is Gardener Israel. And uh, that's about all I want to say about the okra today. And we will uh, uh, get busy and throw this stuff here in the pot with some boil it. Just bring it to boiling, let it cool off, put it in bags, and put it in the freezer. And we'll have it when we get hungry in the wintertime. That's all.